Hello everybody, my name is Wilder, and Littlewood is a game that I found out about kind of late, actually. I hadn't heard anything about this game until the Switch port was announced, and when I saw the game I thought, huh, that looks pretty cute, I'd give it a try. And I'm so glad I did, because what I found in Littlewood was one of the most amazing games I've played in a long while. No joke. It's so filled with heart and passion at every corner, and I loved it so much that I wanted to talk about it today. So, let's get into it. Littlewood released for the PC on June 18th, 2019. Which is crazy to me that this game flew so low under my radar for so long. Because like I said before, I only learned about it when it later released for the Switch on February 25th, 2021. Anyway, Littlewood is an adventure game slash town building sim kind of mix. This game's story is different. You're the hero who went on a big adventure and saved the world from the evil Dark Wizard. After taking down the Dark Wizard, however, you've lost your memories and forgot your entire journey. That's not important though, because you need to rebuild. Your job is to rebuild the town you live in and make it a nice place where you and your friends can live peacefully. I like the little spin this game puts on the story. Your big RPG adventure is over, and now that you've won, it's time to rebuild a town. And knowing this is the calm after a big adventure makes the game feel very relaxing and free. Anyway, there are quite a few mechanics that make up this town building sim, so let's start with building itself. In Littlewood, you can bring up your building menu at any time, and it gives you access to a bunch of blueprints and buildings you can create. You get these blueprints by either buying them in stores or getting them from the characters living in your town. Either they have a good idea for a store or service, or they want you to build a house for them so they can live in your town too. They're the main way you'll be getting blueprints. To make these things, you have to first get the materials required, which you can get from chopping trees for wood or breaking rocks to get stone and ore. You know, stuff like that. Then you can throw them into refiners to make lumber and ingots. The tools are used by just pressing the A button on anything in front of you. Nothing else, so it can kind of feel like just nothing. But the really interesting part about using the tools is how your stamina works in-game. I love this mechanic. So the in-game time works kind of like a farming sim. There's a calendar system with four different seasons. The way that your days progress, though, is really cool. Your stamina bar is tied to the clock. So basically, when you start getting low on stamina, it'll get dark outside. But if you decide to just not use stamina at all that day, then you can walk around, do tasks, and travel around to other areas as much as you want without time moving at all. I think it's a really cool idea and definitely makes you think about stamina management and your workload day by day a little more than normal. I found it to be a really fun mechanic to play around, and it always made my days turn out to be different lengths depending on what tasks I was doing, which always kept things fresh and well-paced. Especially because, well, I'm the one who technically dictates the pace, so there was no issue. Anyway, aside from building houses for the characters, you can also build different shops. Stuff like coffee or craft shops where you can buy boosts to your skills for the day or different furniture and decorations. These furniture and decorations can be put either in people's houses or around your town. One of the big reasons you would want to decorate other people's houses is, well, one, because if you didn't, they would apparently just be fine with sleeping and standing up, but two is because the characters who live in town actually have preferences for their furniture. They all have different themes they want their house and its furniture to be, and if you give it to them then you'll get rewarded with dewdrops, which is the currency of the game. The really big preferences though have to do with where they want their house, and what or who they want to live beside. Some characters prefer to live closer to you, the main character, while others want to live a certain amount of spaces to or from certain shops. It's a really cool mechanic that'll have you constantly moving your town around and changing its layout, which you can do at any time from the build menu, by the way. Moving all the buildings around, creating different areas of town by putting certain shops together, it's just so much fun. You can also create water wherever you want. You can also elevate or lower land. I put my town hall on the third level of my town, just because it makes me feel special when I sit in the big chair and start getting upgrades for my town and its people. It kind of reminds me of Animal Crossing New Leaf. Speaking of, actually, the whole town building mechanic reminds me a lot of Animal Crossing New Horizons. Except without the headaches that New Horizons creates with its limitations. I mean, come on, Nook, you're really only going to let me move one building a day? You should know by now that I can't have the same island layout for more than two months. I'm never satisfied with my own creations, come on! In Littlewood, however, you can literally pick up, drop, drag, extend, create, destroy just about anything you want, whenever you want, with just a button press. The seamless transition between modes is really nice. I will admit that after a while, when you unlock more preferences for the characters and where they want their homes to be, it can be a little difficult to keep the layout you personally like while also meeting multiple requirements for multiple characters. But I mean, like I said before, the fact that there's no limitations and no headaches involved with redesigning your town really makes this a non-issue. Plus, it's so fun that you'll probably be moving everything around all the time anyway. The characters are so cute, you couldn't possibly say no to them. Speaking of, let's talk about them, because they're great. 
There are a total of 15 villagers that will live in your town, and they each have their own unique personalities and designs. And once you build a house for them to live in, you can talk to them each day, do requests for them that you can find on the request board in town, and you can even date them! Yeah, there are relationships in this game as well. You start out by having the option to compliment someone each day, then eventually as your friendship grows, compliment becomes flirt, flirt becomes date, then after a few dates and once their friendship is up, you can get married. The dialogue is really cute as you're complimenting and going on dates with the characters. In fact, the dialogue in this game is actually amazing. There's a ton of it, and while the characters will only say a few things each day before having it roll over, it seems like every day they have something brand new to say. It's always new dialogue. This is probably because I'm not extremely far in the game, but after just coming off of Story of Seasons Pioneers of Olive Town, this game already has way more dialogue than that game. It's really nice. A lot of it is funny too. Dalton, who's one of the best friend characters who helped you save the world on your journey. He's hilarious. I found myself really enjoying talking to him every day. I went out of my way to talk to him every day. Not only is there great day-to-day -day dialogue, but there's also a lot of events or cutscenes in this game. Some happen as you make your way through the game and unlock new areas or characters, but the scenes that happen in your town between the characters who live there are unlocked by getting all characters involved in that scene to the required friendship level. Once you've done that, then you can trigger the scene. There are quite a lot of them too. Some let you learn more about the characters, some let you slowly find out bits and pieces of what your journey to save the world was like, you know, since we lost our memory. There are also a few mysteries or stories that take place over the course of multiple events. Every time one of these came up, I was never bored. They're always so much fun to watch and get invested in. Plus, the characters are all really likable, so seeing them interact, hang out, or help each other is really cute. There's a ton of stuff that I didn't talk about here, but it's because this game really does have a lot of content to it. Plus, I'm still playing through it myself. I just loved it so much that I wanted to come and talk about it already. While I personally like how the game looks, and I think the pixel graphics are super cute and charming, I know that there are quite a few people who will straight up pass in this game because of the way it looks. If you're one of those people, then I urge you to hold on a minute and just take a look at all the mechanics and characters and maybe just think about it. Because the game is really amazing and just a ton of fun. Its mechanics work seamlessly with each other and there's a ton of customization for you to make your town look however you want. Take a look at it, maybe even try it out a bit. I'm really glad I did because while my expectations weren't low or anything, the amount of fun I had and am having with this game is still shocking me. But anyway, Littlewood, have you played it? Do you plan on playing it? Let me know because that's going to be it from me today. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.